You liking my table, Ann? All right, I'm going to turn the camera. Give me a second. I don't want to make y'all dizzy. Hi, Angie. You're welcome, Barbara. I do it for the students. I get a joy out of showing people how to do something I love. We sure are. That answers your question, Joe. I love that, though. Are we going to learn how to go from one road to another when there's a no apparent pathway? Hi, Katia. You latecomers missed all the goodies. I had the camera pointed to my table that displays just the things that I've been working on. Thank you, Jillian. This is what my hair looks like when I don't use a straight iron on it. So, yeah, it's bushy. <laughs> I got more hair than I need. I could probably shave it and make 15 wigs. But thank you, Jillian. Yes, ma'am. A lot of this stuff has been made. These are things that will be going in to the shop. Now, everybody's saying, I want to see a close-up view. All right? So, I am going to show you a basic tatting journal. This is very basic. Inside this tatting journal is vintage laces. I shop for vintage laces for these journals. And it has tatting in there. This is a cloth cover. And as you can see, there's many different types of laces in here. Some are Italian laces, some are French laces, and so forth. But I make these, and I put them in my shop. And that is what they are. They're tatting journals. Okay? I make the ephemera and everything to go with them. And each one is priced differently based on the cost of materials. Another thing that I make is tatting boxes. And this is what they look like. I paint them. I cover them. I decorate them. I do it all. These same deal. And when you open it up, as you can see, you get a small miniature journal pocket to store your supplies in. You also get lace pockets along the edge. These are priced accordingly to what is in them. But every journal has something that is vintage or very aged. Okay? I also make these. This is the hot commodity. Everybody wants one. This is a tatting bag I designed. You have the flap that is magnetized. The new versions, I've put snaps because I find that if you get your phone too close to the magnets, it can strip it. It was a problem I had. But they come with the front pocket for your credit card, money. You know, a tatter has to shop. Let's get real. All right. Inside this tatting bag. Now, this is my personal tatting bag, folks. Turned around so I can get it open. It opens up like this. Inside, you have two pockets in the back. You have a zipper pocket. You have three pockets in the front of that zipper pocket. 
you have another zipper pocket and three more pockets, a place for everything. But here's the nice part, okay? When you open up this front panel, it gives you a place to work. So that if you're at a doctor's office or something, you don't want to get your tatting messed up, you just pull that out and it saves you your thread, your tatting, and everything else. And if you're in a rush, watch. Snap it closed, it grabs, and there you go. It can carry a lot of stuff, okay? When I designed the bag, I found out real quick, it's a combination of three bags. So, yes, this is my own design, but it's got three other designs mixed in it, and how that happened, I have no idea. Number one, I'm not a seamstress. I just knew I wanted something functional, okay? So, with that, I have two sizes of tatting boxes. This is my personal tatting journal, okay? It has vintage laces on it, you can see, all right? It is housed in its own little box, okay? And I decorated everything with nothing but vintage laces and appliques. And this is what it looks like. Now when I'm tatting, I have my tatting journal to write notes in. Then I have a place to store everything I'm working on. It keeps it out of the dust and things like that. When I'm done, I just close the lid. But when I'm not tatting anything, the nice thing is, is the journal fits in there and it closes up. Now, I make these. These take time before something's hanging up over there to make because these are bare wood when I get them they're bare wood boxes I put the legs on them I put all the decorative hinges and stuff like that on there myself and this all is a process the journals I want to be sure that all the journals work together everything that goes in them works together and I try to make an entire set all right because part of chatting you need to make it enjoyable to you and to me I like pretty things around me when I'm chatting to inspire me okay now the prices of these vary like I say based on what's in them what's on them and so forth the tatting bags are the only thing that stay the same price, and they are $40 a bag plus shipping, okay? If you're overseas, then you got to pay all them duty taxes and stuff. I've only shipped overseas once, and I found out, Nanetta, bless her heart, she is such a sweet girl. It was a gift to her for her birthday to herself. Little did I know, if I didn't mark it as a gift, she'd have to pay taxes on her end. And I felt like such a heel for that. So if you're overseas, you have to a lot for things. But I will remember to mark it as a gift. So you don't have to pay that fat tax. All right? So with that said, now you know what you can do with your tatting. This one here is a prime example of a tatted journal that has tatting in it. So you can see, a lot of this tatting, I have tatted up myself. Now, I have ventured out in the world and got tatted bits and bobs here and there. Okay? But every journal... Every tatting box 
and every bag is strictly for tatting. But if you want one like a gratitude journal or something like that, I have those too. You can make your journal what you want, but everything in the journal, on the journal, has been handmade. There is no manufactured product put in there that came from me, okay? Now, I do have some manufactured laces that I use for various things that go in there, but predominantly it is nothing but true handmade laces and true handmade appliques, and they are all vintage, okay? <laughs> Denise, you must have. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll get the shop open. Right now, I got eight orders for these. I have four orders for these. And these are already sold. And I haven't even opened the shop. So, yeah, I got some crafting to do, ladies. Crafting to do. But I enjoy every bit of it. Don't think I don't. I love being creative. When I can touch that creative side of me, it inspires me in my tatting. Because everything I design is around tatting. So, with that said, are we ready to get into the lesson for today? All right. Let me switch cameras, and we're going to get started because we got some more eye candy. And there you go. What's this on my desk? All kinds of fun little goodies, and there's more. It's over that way. So, I'm going to show you all some stuff. Everybody on Facebook was asking, where did you get your uh, seed line from? Well, here is the place. Let me see if I can get it turned right so you guys can see it. Or am I upside down? It's called Marion Jewels and Fiber. And with this, she sent me her calling card, so to speak, that gives you the four sizes of the Ceylon thread that I have bought from her uh, over the years. All right? And I'm going to show you how these different sizes relate to tatting thread. All right, let me check for questions here. No, I did not create the pattern to sell for my tatting bag. As of yet, in the future, it will go out as a pattern, a digital download. Okay? So, on this, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to lay these threads out for you. And we're going to compare. No downshot. Whoops. What is the problem? Uh-oh. Don't ask me. Because it's on. Let me page hooks. Let me see what's going on here. I 
I can't figure it out. I don't know. I don't understand why it's not switching. I don't get it. All right, hold on a second. I'll be right back. Shoot the face forward only. I can't figure it out. can't figure it out so I don't know what's going on and he's in a meeting so we'll just do it this way there's more than one way to skin a cat because that camera is not working for some reason I don't understand it so let's go back to this Marion's jewels and fiber she sent me her business card with the threads on the back of the business card that I normally order from her. Can you all see that? Okay. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you the difference. You see this green thread? Do you see it? Now, I want to hold this green thread up to a size 20 thread of Lisbeth. Do you see how close? Well, that fell down. Let's try that again. Can you see how close in relation those two threads are close to the same size? Hi, Phyllis. We got camera problems again. Ceylon or Eslon? I know about Ceylon. Eslon, I do not. It's new to the battlefield, okay? I have been using Ceylon since my bead weaving days. I like the way that it works and its strength. I mean, this is some seriously strong stuff. And when you're working on a beaded bag, you need something hefty to carry it. I have never used Eslon. That is basically a new product. I know that the Ceylon has a coating on it that is gas singed on there. Okay? To give it the sheen that it has. The Eslon, I 
have heard it does not have the sheen that the Ceylon's got. And in your repertoire of Ankar's tatting, you really want the sheen because that enhances the tatting to go along with the beads. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, it is just slightly smaller. They're a millimeter smaller than the sea line. That I do know. Thank you, Tasia. Tasia. Yeah, that didn't come out right. Alright, so the this one here, the green, is what they call fine weight text. One 35, okay, and it's a point, 0 0.4 millimeter thread. Now, your micro thread, can you all see this? Let me get it up here in my hand behind it. Can you all see this? This is about the size of size 40 thread which is right here, Elizabeth 40. You see the two colors? There's a lavender and a white. An oyster white. Can you all see? Hi, Nanetta. That's okay. You're always right on time. So, you all see? The Elizabeth 40 is about the same as the microcord. Okay? Now, this big purple one right here, that is the size of size 3 Elizabeth tatting thread. Okay? And that is a 0.9 millimeters, 0 0.9 millimeter thread, and that is close to a size 3 Lisbeth thread. Okay, this black one, this is called bead cord. This is a 0 0.5 millimeter. Now, this one here is a close second to the Tex 135. So either one of these will work, okay, for a size 20 thread. They will both work on 11 odd sized beads, okay? Now I just blew everybody's mind when I said 11 odd. When you're bead shopping, you get beads and they come 11 slash 0. It is called 11 aught. Okay, and it's spelled A-U-G-H-T. 15 aught. 8 aught. 10 aught. That is the millimeter size of the bead. Okay? So, that will help you remember what size bead goes with what thread. The larger the bead number, the smaller the bead, just like with tatting thread. Okay? All right, Phyllis. Yes, name of it, size 3 equivalent. Alright, the size 3 equivalent is called Ceylon Tex 400 Bead Cord 0 0.9 millimeter. If you order from Marion's Bead and Fibers, she will send you a sample card. If you request, she will send you a sample card of every one of Ceylon's threads. 
And trust me, there's a blue million sizes there. But these are the four I have ordered from her for years. No, the one that is the purple laurel, that is Tex 400 bead cord. The one you're talking about is plain bead cord. Yes, Tasneem. You're right. So, you're correct, Laurel. That's how it's written on your beads. 11 slash 0. And that, when you go to a bead store and you say, I want 11 aught beads, they will give you 11 aught beads. That's their language. You know, you go to a hardware store, you have to speak hardware. Well, you go to a bead store, you have to talk bead. When you go to a tatting store, you have to talk tatting. The website is Marion Jewels and Fiber. And she has got a very quick turnaround on delivery. Yeah, I can post that on the group, on the Facebook group. Not a problem. Like I said, these are the threads that I have used in Ankar's tatting. That's why she sent me this sample. Because she's she's my supplier. Okay? <laughs> Has been for years. So she knew exactly what I was talking about. Alright? Yes, we can get it posted on the Facebook page. Not a problem. Alright, when you get your micro cord, it's going to come in a baggie, unless you buy the whole kit and then it comes in a box. And the colors that she offers are gorgeous. Alright, this lavender here, look at the shine on that. Can y'all see that? Isn't that gorgeous? And it, I mean, this stuff works. When you condition it, it holds its shape. It does what you want it to do. Now, your Tex, what is it? The Tex 135. Yes, the Tex 135. There you go, in copper. It'll come in a bigger spool. This is microcord. This is the Tex 135. This one here comes, this is the Tex 400. Okay? And you see the difference in the sizes. You're getting the same amount of thread. It's the way it's wrapped. Okay? So, Let's move on to some other goodies. But before I do, I want to show you this one. When you're working with nylon thread, I know you guys have heard of this. Okay, thread zap. Let me show you what thread zap does. First of all, you have a safety guide on here for a reason. Once I show you what this thing does, you'll see why we have a safety guard on it. So little ones can't turn it on. Alright. Batteries in this thing last forever. Now I'm going to show you with a piece of thread what this does. Watch. You see that flame on there? That cuts and seals your cord. $9.99 at Amazon. Okay, and it's called the Thread Zapper Ultra. All right, your batteries go in right here. When you open this up, bye, Steph, glad you came. You also have another burner that comes with it because this thing can break if you when it's hot if you don't watch what you're doing. All right, so... Don't, if you're going to use it, 
once you're done, if you've got little ones, put your safety little thing on top because they can't turn it on because they will get third degree burns from this. But it makes working with nylon thread so much easier because it seals that end so it doesn't fray. All right. Another good use for this. Okay. I know y'all love metallics. What about that for metallics? This is an Italian metallic thread. Okay. I got this from Cat Wild. I think I gave $16 for this plus shipping. And I mean, 5,000 meters, I'll never use this much in a lifetime, but it is metallic. It is silver. This stuff, I mean, seriously, tats up beautifully. Okay, you can tat with this. It's very slick. It's the only word I can think of. Um, it's smooth. So it's not going to do that, well, I'm going to stretch this silver way back to the end that some metallics do. Exactly, Laurel. Sue, you are 100% right. Polyester threads, okay? This metallic thread, same deal. Take the safety off. Watch. Watch what I'm doing here. Get my hand in position. Watch the fire. See how fast that cut, and that stops the fraying. Okay? Now, this is what metallic thread does. It separates. So, if you use your thread zapper, it stops it. Alright? Just showing you. Now, metallics come... Silver, gold, copper, any color you can imagine. Here is the gold. Okay? Do you see it? That I got from Kat. Uh, Kat Wild sold it on her Etsy shop. She, when she gets it in, she'll list it on her Facebook page. But she carries a lot of jewelry making goodies okay now for you american folks Harold, i found this all right over in the sewing section at hobby lobby okay she found an antique gold now this has a coarser texture to it it's a little harder to work with okay but, if you condition it, it will work. Fred, I bought a cord burner. I give almost $300 for it that you just lay the paracord on and used it about four times. It stunk. I like the thread zapper better. Trust me. It wasn't worth my investment. I'll just say that. Now, I am going to show you a vintage find. Now, if you can get your hands on it, you people that go to secondhand stores and thrift shops that carry vintage items, do you see this? Do y'all know what this is? I bet you all don't. I have it in green, a real pretty emerald green. And the antique gold. Okay? This thread here is what cobblers use for making shoes and handbags. Tasia, I don't know the name of it. It was in Italian. But when Kat displayed it on Facebook, I bought it. No, this is not silk. This is a form of upholstery thread. 
but they use it for shoes, for pocketbooks, things like that. I got this out of my mother-in-law's stash when we cleaned out her house. My guess is this is probably 50 years old. Okay, and you see, I'm pulling on it, still no breakage. It's because it is a nylon heavy duty thread. See where it says nylon? And your tough your Ceylon is made of the same stuff. So that gives you a thought. What can I use in place of that is readily available in my area? Alright? Now, this piece here was tatted using the Ceylon. Do you see how it's holding its shape? You see that? That's what that Ceylon does. It holds its shape. If you get the size D Nymo thread, it's not going to hold its shape. That thread is what they use in Native American beadwork. They use it on a loom. They make the beaded pocketbooks with the liner in them, things like that. They have to be flexible. So the beading thread that is called Nymo Size D is not something you want to use for ANCARs. It will not hold up for stability here. All right. So now that we have gotten that under control and we have all these little fun goodies to play with. Yeah, folks are buying in bulk and reselling under sand, reselling sand best under different names for profit. All your stores do that. Stores buy in bulk and sell it for profit. That's just the economy in a nutshell. Yeah, Fred, try your shoe stores. Places that do repair work. Now, they can tell you where they buy their thread from. Remember, you have to condition this thread. Or... It's not going to work well for you. It will fight you tooth and nail if you do not condition. Because one, these types of thread are not made to put beads on. Alright? Remember that. They are made for other purposes. The only one that's made for beads is the sea line. Remember that. Because it's made for beads, it's soft, it's pliable, it's manageable. But when you're done, you get a throwing star, okay? Deadly weapons here. So, these here have the same quality. But to find this thread, I don't know if I could. Laura, when you condition your thread, let me get my thread conditioner out. Thread Magic is the go-to conditioner these days. And you can get it at Hobby Lobby, Joann's, Michael's, anywhere they carry bead thread. This is what it looks like. Name's on the top. And this is the jar. When you open it, fingers ain't working today, ladies. It's got this gooey stuff in here. Alright? And what you want to do, I'm going to use this thread as an example so it will show up. You want to lay that thread right there. Can y'all see that? Lay that thread and pull it through. Then do it again. Twice is all you need. And then you just run your hand across it. Now, you see the difference in this thread? See how stiff this is? Look at this. Limp. It's pliable. That's what 
threat conditioner does for you in ANCARS. Okay? So you've got to learn to condition that threat. You can use beeswax. Okay? Uh, the only problem I find with beeswax is it gets all over the thread and your hands get greasy like. But it is a good hand conditioner. Okay? You know, as you age, you get these little bump, these places that are rough on your skin. Beeswax will take care of it no time flat if you're making a lot of Ancar's jewelry. Just fair warning. But it also smells good. I think beeswax smells really, really good. You're welcome, Laurel. Any more questions about the types of threads that we use for Ancar's? Uh, Ingrid, you're asking, do you condition the thread as you work or before you wind the shuttle? I condition my thread as I wind the shuttle. And I also condition again when necessary. Because when you wind your shuttle, you've got all them beads and stuff on there. And they're moving around. It will wipe that conditioner down over time. Okay. Thank you for coming, Denise. But, yeah, I condition as I need. If your thread is not pliable like this was, if it's stiff like this, see how that's doing? It's twisting on itself. Then condition it. It's not going to hurt. And then when you, you know, block the piece, <coughs> Okay, when you block the piece, you're going to spritz it with water. And you're going to pin down all your little picos, your decorative picos. You're going to pin these little arches in. Well, on and cars, you don't have to pin these arches, arches in unless you're using cotton thread. Because the arches come on in. Okay? Your picos stay a pico. But what I do is I spritz it with a little water and pat it down to put it into a flat shape. Okay, because the second part of ANCARS, you need that flat shape. Alright, so I will spritz it, lay it on a towel, and pat it down and let it dry. And it washes away that sealant, or that conditioner. Beeswax, it will not wash away. So you're going to have to work at it. So, I suggest, if you use beeswax, get you a cloth towel to work that beeswax into the fibers. It's not going to hurt your beads. It's not going to hurt your thread. But it will dull the sheen. How much thread do I con condition at one time? That depends on how much I'm putting on my shuttle. If it's a shuttle like this, Clover Bobbin, I would condition, if this was Ceylon, I would condition all this thread before I put it on the shuttle. It's just that simple. You have to condition. So, what I do, I'll show you my trick to the trade. I'm going to use this as an example. All right. Get this out. My fingers is fumbling here. All right. I'm going to put, say, this thread here on a shuttle. First thing I would do is condition the end of that thread. All right. Run it through once. Run it through twice. Wipe it out. And you will get a little gritty on your hands. That's fine. I usually have a little paper towel or something. Then I would wrap this around my post. My bobbin. Whatever. Have I got a bobbin in here? Let's see. This is my goody thing. Alright. I would thread this on my bobbin. Let me 
I'm going to use this one here as the holder. So that is conditioned. See? Now, I'm going to wrap this. Run it through. Run it through. Came off the bobbin. And wipe it down. Put it on there. Get you a few wraps on there to hold that thread on. Okay. We got our few wraps. We're going to do some more. And this is how you do it. And once you get those little nubbies on your finger, you don't have to go twice. You can take your finger and pull it on down into the fiber. Does everybody understand that? All this does, conditioning your thread, is make your thread more manageable. When you're working in cars, you are working, and Angie's class is a good example for this. You had a very large ring. You all had to work. Most of you had a gaposis problem. All right, Phyllis, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you next week. Most of the time, y'all had a gaposis down here, or your thread kinked up down here. Conditioning that thread slows that down, okay? So, I condition my tatting thread. I condition thread that I'm using for anchors. I condition, even if all I'm doing is sewing a hemline, I condition my sewing thread. I condition my polyester threads. It is so it tames it, and I don't have to fight it. Because if I have to fiddle and fight with something more than five minutes, I'm done. I don't have time for that. So I condition it to make sure I don't have to fight it. Now, if you forget to put your lid back on here and you leave this old thing sitting out. Okay? You can peel it out. Let me show you. See, I'm peeling it out. Turn it over and use the other side and it will work its moisture back down to the bottom. So you haven't lost anything. Don't throw it away. Because, yeah, I leave glue open, I leave this open. You'd be surprised. Because when you're busy, you forget. We're human. Okay? Now, let's move on to beads. What kind of beads can I use? Well, has anybody here been to a bead store? I'm sure all of you have been to a bead store. Have you been to a bead show? Where you can buy beads this big. Okay? The large beads make great centers. See the center on this one? Let me turn around right way. See the center bead on that? That is a 12 millimeter hematite bead. Okay? Now, when you go to bead shows, you see racks and racks and racks. Now, you can get cheap pearl plastic beads. Okay? They will work. The thread with the bead is what is pretty. But when you buy plastic pearl beads, remember they're going to peel. With time and age, they will peel. Fred, where are you at? In Florida or Georgia? Because they do have a bead show in Georgia. I've been there. Um, let me think. Beetle on Magazine. I believe is who it is. Puts one every year there at the Civic Center in Gwinnett County. At least they did when I lived down there. 
Okay, now, plastic beads work. Your piece will be lighter, okay? But you're going to get, if you're going to sell it, plastic beads will bring you pennies. If you're going to use real pearl type beads or a ceramic pearl, something like that, that's a more costly, heavier bead, you're going to get more money for your Ancars jewelry. Most Ancars jewelry done for profit, for making money, they use Swarovski crystals. Okay? They use gemstones. They use pearls. So, yeah. And that is high dollar territory. But you can make the same thing for personal use. Even for sale. As long as you sell at reasonable price. Plastic. It'll do the same thing. Right. But if it's a good quality cheap bead then yes, it will bring. These beads here, I'm going to pull one out. These are plastic beads. Okay? Can y'all see? I'm trying. Can y'all see that bead? Or is my nails in the way? See that? That looks like a top quality pearl. But it's a plastic bead. It is a better quality plastic bead okay if you pick up a bead and it's cold to the touch nature made that one okay that is a natural bead anytime you pick up any kind of beads and they're cold to the touch it is a natural bead it came that way the only thing was it was polished out and a hole was drilled through it. Okay? Now, here is another pearl that is cheap pearls. I think I got this whole jar for about a buck. Okay? And you see the difference. Can you see the difference in that? It has very little shine. Your higher quality beads that are cheap beads have a better shine. Because they want them to look more like the natural bead. Okay? Now, yeah, you can use glass. Correct, correct. You can go to a bead store. Now, I'm going to show you these. These are tiny, tiny pearls. But they are the real McCoy. Okay? If I can get one out without it falling out in the floor. See it? You see how tiny that is? That is a real one. Okay? You see this jar? We are talking about $45 for this little jar right here. Because these are real tiny pearls. You can't very well rub them across your teeth to check for the sand. But you can check with the feel. Okay? Silver beads tarnishing. Okay. If you're going to use silver in your ANCARs, my advice is get a good silver polish and polish them before you put them in your end cars. Because if they tarnish and you drop this, these are tarnished, okay? If you drop this in Tarnix or a jewelry cleaner, then you're going to have a problem because it's going to eat your nylon thread because of the chemical structure. Yes, that one had a hole in it, and it's a very tiny, tiny hole. Uh, Angie, when you use real beads like this, no, 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 no. These are 15 odd. That's how small these are. Um, when you use real pearls and they drill the hole and do all that fun stuff, you have to use 
the NIMO thread. The, they call it NIMO D size thread because it'll eat up this. Okay, pearls will eat up this sealon, this nylon, because of the insides of the pearl. It's rough. It's very coarse. Like I said, the way to test real pearls, run them across your teeth if it feels like you're eating the ocean and the sandy beach. Yeah, guess what? You got the real McCoy. But it will eat the enamel right off your teeth. Okay? So, real pearls, hard to come by. Costly, most definitely. What I try to do is mix both cheap beads with the expensive beads. But I get quality cheap beads. I hope that makes sense to you. I would rather pay $10 for a jar of beads this side you know, right here, this size of beads, pay $10 for it, then to give $45 for this. I will get further with this size than this size. But if I put this with this, then I have something that you really can't tell the difference. But be careful buying beads, because these here are plastic. But they look cheap. Do you see that? They look very, very cheap. These are 11 knots. Okay? Yeah, polished aluminum doesn't tarnish so much. But aluminum is a metal. And metal on nylon. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's like diamonds. Drop diamonds in water, they'll disappear. You don't see the diamond. So, if you're going to buy for selling, buy your higher quality beads. Uh, I buy these little jars like this from Amazon because they got the screw top. Okay? And if you drop them, they're not going nowhere. The bead cases that you get where the beads are in the big tubes, drop one of those. And yeah, you and the vacuum cleaner is going to be best friends because the beads are going to go everywhere. Okay? So, any other questions? We didn't get as far today as I thought we would. Only because of camera issues, but yeah, we'll fix that. We had a power surge. Not really a power surge, just the power went out and came back on. So, yeah, probably changed the settings on something. Yeah, I dropped, this is no joke, I had a tube of beads that would have filled up this little container here. Okay, nothing flat. And I had given a chunk of money for those beads. And let me tell you something. They hit the carpet and I couldn't find them. But I tell you what I did. I laid a knee-high stocking over the suction part of the hose on the vacuum cleaner. And I sucked up all my beads. Of course, I had to pick them out of all the dirt. But it worked. And I didn't lose my beads. Exactly, Nanetta. Exactly. But for my personal use, yeah, I'd go with the higher quality cheap beads. Okay? But for sale, yes. Always, if you're going to sell, just like in the shop, I don't sell anything that's not of high quality. Okay, I have made bags that I did not feel were up to snuff for someone. And I sent them a brand new bag to replace it. Mary Lou, we have an Ancars pattern coming up, but we're not going to get into that till next six weeks. You all need the basics. We did not run when we were toddlers. 
okay? We didn't do a marathon when we were toddlers. And tatting is the same principle. You have to learn to walk before you can run. And cars is so technically challenging that you have to be on your game and know what you're doing, when you're doing, what tools you're going to use. Because once you start, you can't put it down. You've got to keep going because if your tension deviates any, it will show. And that's why you've got to tap that piece and get it done. <laughs> I like that, Fred. Fred said, have your kids sort beads by colors. It's real punishment. Not a problem, Mary Lou. I know, getting into tatting and the different avenues you can go in with tatting, it just changes everything. You just want to get in there. You want to do, you want to do, you want to do. But I'm not going to give you more than you can chew on at one setting. Because it's difficult enough when you start tatting. But to understand everything, you need the bare bones, nitty gritty facts. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm taking it slow for your benefit. I know how to tat in cars, but you don't. Okay? And my job is walk you through it so that you don't fall in those pitfalls that I fell in. And then you make a mess of what you're making. And you've got $45 beads in that piece. And you're not happy with it? That's not fair to you. I want you to be able to produce the quality material that you want. Not a knockoff. Okay? Does that make sense to everybody? Wouldn't you rather have all the facts, all the pitfalls before you find them? I can't help you if you find them after I've explained them. But I can hopefully prevent you from making those pitfalls. Because I did. When I started with ANCARS, there was very little information out there. Very little. And... I had to learn the hard way, and I spent buku dollars trying to get the right materials to work with. Panina, you'd be surprised. I'm a very scheduled person. I live my life by clock, and I have a calendar that lists everything I'm going to do that day. And I don't list more than I can handle that day. Because you never know what life is going to throw at you. So you may have to throw something on to the next day. Okay. You all want something to practice? Those earrings that Angie taught in her class. I want you all to tap those rings. I want you to tap me three of them in a row. I want you to use your thread conditioner. I want you to practice closing those large rings. Because in ANCARS, you have large rings and you have small rings. <laughs> I do sleep. I get about four hours a night, but I do sleep. Yes, needle is much easier, but I'll be honest with you. Needle tatting in ANCARS, the two do work together very well. Okay, I've tatted ANCARS using a needle. I have also tatted ANCARS using a shuttle. And in my opinion, needle is better on ANCARS for the beginner. Okay? But because most of you are shuttle tatters, I'm going to show you the tricks of the trade. 
Oh, Danella, you don't have to thank me. I enjoy what I do. Now, Amazon's want me to give them a review on the Bee Buddy. <laughs> yeah, I order a lot of things, people. Uh, yes, Laura, you can go to Marion's Bead and Fiber. They will show you the difference of these threads. But I don't know about you guys, but when you see it on camera or on the computer, it ain't the same. It's better to touch it. And that's why I gave you a comparison on these. Katia, the reason that you don't have a problem with size 40, but you do in 10, you have small hands. You don't have big, long piano fingers, you know, hands, men's hands. You've got small hands. People that have small hands have a harder time working with the larger threads. Does that make sense to y'all? Because people with small hands can't get that gap to, you know, work their tension. They can't spread their hands like this. See, I told you, you have small hands. Mary Lou, eventually you will get the shuttle. It took me six months to get the flip. Okay, six months. So, any more questions? We didn't get to cover everything I wanted to, but I did get to cover a lot of things. Now, before I forget, the website is under construction. Please ignore what's on that website. I have got someone, Sue used to manage the website for us, and since she got sick, she's not able to do it anymore. Me, I'm dumber than a box of rocks when it comes to website stuff, okay? I just, I'm not going to say I can run a website. That ain't happening. Uh, but I got someone that is working on the website, and we were getting everything ready to go, and she had a wedding she had to go to this week. So, this week we're not going to get anything up on the website, but eventually we will. Uh, there are many changes going to be coming to the website. It will be easier for you guys to find things when we get through. Okay? I'm taking in consideration people like me that don't know tech. Alright. Stephanie, good luck with that size 100 thread. I don't have bifocals strong enough for 100 thread. I do mine. Anything that's larger or smaller than a size 40, I have to do it by feel. I can't see it. Mary Lou, I can relate with you. You're welcome, Panina. So, is there any other questions? We'll pick up next class right where we left off. Next week, you all are going to get official tatting homework because you all are going to tat this little puppy next week with beads. You're going to use some beads. Now, for class, I want Lisbeth Thread next week. I want size 11 hot beads or whatever size you need for the thread you're going to use. We're not going to do the sea line. Not this week. When we get into the anchor tatting, you will get into the sea line. But we're going to do some bead tatting with our Elizabeth thread. 
All right? So, this week, I want you to tat up three rings, large ones. Use the 32 count. Use a 40 count on that ring. You can put picos in, break it up. But I want you to tat three large rings and close it. No gap down at the bottom of that ring. But I am going to show you a trick. When you're tatting your large rings, if I was tatting a large ring, this is what I would do. See my tail? Wrap my hand. See all this extra thread? Watch what I do. Wrap it around that finger. Because every time you pull back and forth on this thread, you collapse the legs of those double stitches and they kink up. That's where your twist comes in. You're very welcome, Barbara. Very welcome. Any size you're comfortable with working with, Katia. I don't want anybody stepping outside their box of comfort. Because when we get into the ant cars, yeah, you're going to be out of your comfort zone. So we're just getting you prepared so that when it comes to ant cars, you can handle it. I'm glad you learned something today, Bev. Thank you. What size thread? Whatever size you want, Jillian. It's what you're comfortable with. Mind blown, Stacy. I didn't mean to blow your mind too much. Exactly. Y'all hit that like button. Spread the word about the classes. Get more students in here. When you drop the shuttle, you mean when you post it, you have a gap down there? The twist isn't coming out. What you need to do is reopen that ring just a little so your shuttle does the spin. You know, it'll be like that. If you drop that, sh open that ring just a little bit and let that shuttle drop, let that twist come out, then try to close it. You should be able to get rid of that twist. You're welcome, Jillian. Yeah, Elizabeth, it's very twisty. When I'm using Elizabeth, guarantee you I'm conditioning it. It puts the thread to the back of the piece, and yes, it does look more uniform. You're welcome, Robin. Thank you for coming. Any other questions for y'all leave? You're welcome, Tasneen. Eleven aught size uh, beads go well with twenty. Also, uh, you can get a ten aught. It's just a little bit bigger. Yeah, you know him. That's the size bead. It's a 11 aught fits it. It's a little snug. It holds its shape. Uh, you can try a larger bead, a size 10. Just remember, it's going to be really loose. Any other questions? 
I want to make sure everybody gets their questions answered. I'll get this up on the web on the Facebook page and I'm looking for my bead size chart as well. I have one where it's at I don't know probably packed because we are moving but I am going to continue looking for it if I can find it. I will definitely share it with you guys on Facebook. But I am going to photocopy the front and the back of this with these threads in comparison to the Lisbeth threads. You're correct, Sue. Delicas, uh, you have a tendency to run into what they call curves, and they're misformed beads. Toho beads are the best. Yes, you can use a big eye to thread the beads, or you can use Venus beading needles, or you can use your floss threaders, whatever works for you. There's no tatting police. No tatting police. Yeah, Shipwreck Beads does have a really good bead size chart. Thanks, Sue, for sharing that. Anything else, ladies? I tell you, y'all are a fantastic group, and it's been a pleasure teaching you so far. You're just so eager. I love it. Next week, we will be doing an actual pattern, and it will be this one. This little puppy right here. Isn't that a gorgeous pattern? I love it. But I'm going to teach you how to place these beads on your thread so that they land in the spot they're supposed to. Never heard of a reverse beading needle. It's Ceylon, Nanetta. This is Ceylon thread. This is what I use. People are saying the Eslon is the same, and that's probably what you can find over there where you're at. So you can look into it. I've not worked with it, so I don't know any... I'm not that familiar with it at all. If you do get this Eslon, let me know what you think of it. <laughs> Panina, you're so sweet. Laura, thank you. <laughs> Make your own. I love it, Sue. Anything else, ladies? If not, I'll see you next week. Now, I'm going to run intermediate and advanced together for a while till I can get the work done that I need to get done. Get these orders out. Oh, okay. I didn't know what that was. That's cool, Sue. Oh, I will. My husband makes sure I do. He's good to me that way, you know. Good, because next week we're getting into some tatting. Like I said, this is a process. And Cars is going to take two series of classes. And that's six weeks apiece. All right, ladies. You all have a wonderful day. Take care of each other. Take care of yourself. I'll be back next week, same time. No class on Tuesday, Janella. Uh, I'm trying to learn the website. I am trying to get orders done and filled. I am trying to get packed for the move. Yeah, I got a busy schedule. Okay. 
Plus, I have to play in class. So, next week I'll be set up, I'm ready to go, and maybe we can get this camera. Like I say, power flickered over the weekend. Don't ask me, I can't tell you why it lost its settings, but for some reason it's not set. So, next Wednesday, 4 o'clock. Come in a few minutes early. We'll chit-chat. I'll answer any questions. I'll hit the high points that um, Angie may miss in her class. I'll go over some things with you at that time from Angie's class. So come on in a little early. I'll be here about quarter to four. So until then, stay safe. Take care of yourself. Get lots of sunshine and happy tatting. Have a wonderful day, ladies. See you next time. Bye-bye.